Broadcasting live from the studios of World Dairy Expo in Madison, Wisconsin, USA. This is WXPO News. Good morning and welcome to WXPO News at 9 on this Friday morning, October 6th. I'm Kristen Olson. Here's what's coming up on today's show. Another record. Last night's Youth Showmanship Contest saw a record number of participants. We'll share highlights ahead. At the place where the global dairy industry meets, many companies choose World Dairy Expo as a platform for launching the latest in innovation. We'll share one participating company's big reveal. And an expo tradition. Hear one family's story of how Expo has been a treasured event for three generations. But first, a record 424 participants competed in the 2017 World Dairy Expo Youth Showmanship Contest last night on the colored shavings. The contest has been a fan favorite at Expo for more than three decades. Youth showmen from around the globe competed for top showmanship honors in the junior, intermediate, and senior divisions. Taking top honors in the junior division was Brianna Meyer from Chilton, Wisconsin. The intermediate division was won by Taylor Vandermeulen from Brighton, Ontario. And lastly, Michaela Endress of Lodi, Wisconsin took home the senior division title. The top 15 winners received neck medallions and a cash prize. The first place winner of each division received the Clippers, courtesy of Andis Company. The junior division winner received the W. Terry Howard Award with the Intermediate Division winner receiving the Howard Bagley Award and also a Clippers. And the Senior Division winner received the Keith King Award and a semen tank courtesy of MBE. Each division winner also received an embroidered jacket sponsored by Farm First Dairy Cooperative. Laura Phoenix of Ontario, Norm McNaughton of Ontario, and David Crack of Quebec, Canada placed the Junior, Intermediate, and Senior Divisions respectively. Well, for months, companies have been submitting new products and technologies to World Dairy Expo's Innovation Unveiled page. However, other companies choose to make their product launches a big surprise. Mycogen Seeds was one of the latter. On Wednesday night at World Dairy Expo, they held a large product launch in the Mycogen Seeds Attendee Lounge in New Holland Pavilion 1 for their unified corn silage with Silosoft technology. As the first product of its kind in a target audience of dairy producers looking to achieve higher milk yields, World Dairy Expo provides the perfect atmosphere and audience to announce the product. The unified corn silage with Silosoft technology is just an example of one of the many products Expo attendees can find in the trade show. And you can certainly find more in our Innovation Unveiled section at WorldDairyExpo.com. Coming up on WXPO News, a pastime for generations. See how one family has been participating in World Dairy Expo from the very beginning. We'll be right back. The latest innovation is the Magellan Active Alley Flooring. The Magellan Rubber Flooring is an innovative solution for drainage and removal of the liquids in the alleys. The future lies in understanding animal needs. Innovation is dedicated to solutions and to the profitability of cattle rearing. 
The future of dairy health is here with a new portfolio that's more comprehensive than ever. Proven products like Bovacalc, Polymast, Today, Zactran, and Epronex. Stop by Beringer Ingelheim, boost 2806 to 2809 to get your free Epronex beanie while supplies last. And don't forget to enter for your chance to win a pellet grill from Yoder Smokers. Welcome back. Now in its 51st year, World Dairy Expo has seen families of all generations come to the show to compete, exchange ideas, and make memories to last a lifetime. We caught up with one family that's been exhibiting on the colored shavings since Expo began. Hear how Expo's youth programs helped create a spark that's continued for generations. Crescent Mead was started uh, back when I was 18, which is a long time ago. I worked for Alan Hetz, and uh, the prefix Crescent Mead was born after the Crescent Beauty prefix. And I didn't go to college, but Alan had the hands-on workability and the teaching, and, and I'll be grateful for that forever. Well, it started when I was a kid. That's all I knew. Um, took a break for a while from the farm to start my trucking business and uh, decided to come back to it and thought we'd keep tradition alive by continuing to do what was done before. And myself, I've pretty much been going to the World Dairy Expo since I was a baby. I think my mom and dad took uh, me there maybe the first, second year of World Dairy Expo. And uh, we started showing there as the family farm. Um, I think maybe when I was about nine years old. People are saying the showing of cows is starting to be a dying breed, but even the big commercial dairymen are buying a show cow for their kids to show. And I don't ever see it dying because it's, it's, it's fun, it's entertaining, you get to meet people. When you have a barn full of good cows, it's fun to go back to it every day. The junior involvement is huge, and uh, if it wasn't for the kids, I don't know if I'd be doing this. Truthfully, I don't think I would. Uh, it, you can't raise children in a better atmosphere than the Holstein industry. So, but that's basically it in a nutshell. In my case, it's probably a father's wish that what you started or wanted to do in your life was successful enough or made you happy enough that your children wanted to take over and do that same thing. It makes you think that maybe you did the right thing 50 years ago when you started. We're so fortunate to have our family right here. You know, they're, they're not a thousand miles away and, and they're doing the same thing that I did when I was a kid and, and enjoyed. And, and so that, that's been a wonderful thing. The Wendor family will be competing on the colored shavings this morning in the International Red and White Show. Best of luck to the family and to all exhibitors competing today. Well, hundreds of youth come to Expo each year to compete with the best of the best on the colored shavings, but only few have a chance to be named grand champion of their breed, and even fewer do it twice. One lucky exhibitor was able to experience that, and she's with us now. We have Ashley Brandle of Wisconsin, who can, exhibited the grand champion of the International Milking Shorthorn Junior Show. Ashley, welcome to the set. So tell us a little bit about your cow, her name, maybe when she was born. Can you share some details with us about her? Um, she is very unique. Sometimes she'll like one thing, and then sometimes she'll like another. And she's an okay walker at my house, but when she um, goes into the ring, she knows immediately that um, she's in the ring and she knows to be prepared and stuff like that. What's her name? Her name is Maple Fudge of 12 Oaks. And how long have you had Fudge? Um, I bought her in, uh, the state, Milk and Shorthorn State Sale when she was like a spring calf. And Ashley, how long have you been showing at World Dairy Expo? Um, I've been showing here since I was like 9 or 10. And you are how old now? 11. 11 years old. So tell us a little bit about uh, 
what your favorite parts of showing cattle are uh, and all of the work and the things that you do to get ready to come to Expo each year. Um, I take a lot of time to work on a lot of Expo stuff and go over and wash Fudge and Walker and yeah, I just take a lot of time out of my day to work with her and stuff. Do you have other animals here at the show? Uh, no, I just only brought her. Only brought Fudge. So what are there other contests or activities that you'll be partaking in at Expo this year? Um, I don't know. I really want to walk around and see what other stuff there is. And tell us about your, your family. Do you have a family that's involved? Um, yeah, all my family is. Um, my siblings, Colton, me, and then my sister, Katie, and then Justin, and then my mom and dad, my aunt Tracy, Brandel, and then all my cousins got me involved with showing, and I always look up to them. So you have a lot of fun at the show working together mm -hmm. as a family. Has Fudge gone to any other shows this year? Can you tell us about those? Um, yeah, she went to Open State Fair and did really well there, and... I can't remember what else. And what are you most excited about? So you got to do the, the spotlight last year for the mm -hmm. Supreme Ceremony. What was your favorite part about that and what are you looking forward to on Saturday? Um, I liked how many pictures I got to see of me and it was just really fun. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised when your name was announced on uh, earlier this week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Ashley. Congratulations once again, and we're really excited for you to see you on Saturday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When we come back, David Jones will break down your daily markets. The latest innovation is the Magellan Active Alley Flooring. The Magellan Rubber Flooring is an innovative solution for drainage and removal of the liquids in the alleys. The future lies in understanding animal needs. Innovation is dedicated to solutions and to the profitability of cattle rearing. The future of dairy health is here with a new portfolio that's more comprehensive than ever. Proven products like Volvacalc, Polymast, Today, Zactran, and Epronex. Stop by Beringer Ingelheim, boost 2806 to 2809 to get your free Epronex beanie while supplies last. And don't forget to enter for your chance to win a pellet grill from Yoder Smokers. starting to fill throughout the day. We have a record breaking over 880 participating companies this year in the World Dairy Expo trade show. It's time for this morning's market report coming from David Jones of Jones Farms Dairy in Stevenson, California. David, over to you. Thank you, Kristen. The upward movement in the CME spot trade continued Thursday as we saw increases across the board. Block and barrel prices rose based on the presence of bidders, but no sales. Barrels rose a penny, and blocks gained a quarter cent to close at $1.74 and $1.75 and a quarter cent per pound, respectively. 
The increase in barrel prices continued to reduce the gap between blocks and barrels to one and a quarter cent. Grade A nonfat dry milk saw a modest increase of three quarters of a cent after two loads traded hands and finished the day at 83 and a half cents. Butter prices also rose two cents over four loads to finish at 237 and a half cent. Class three milk futures had positive upward movement through the fourth quarter and the first half of 2018, gaining between one and 12 cents. Class four futures saw little volume, but continued the upward movement as well. That's it for today's market report. Back to you, Kristen. Thank you, David. It certainly takes an army to help amplify World Dairy Expo's message to a global audience. Each year, Expo sees more than 200 registered journalists who come to the show to help share Expo's story with the world. Joining me right now is farm broadcaster Joe Gill. Joe, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Good morning. So first of all, explain to our viewers where you come from, what you're reporting, and how many years you've been attending World Dairy Expo. Well, we're located right in the belly button of Minnesota, I like to say, right in Stearns County in the center portion of the state. Still the biggest dairy county in Minnesota, uh, over 3,000 family-run dairy farms for the most part. Uh, very dairy intensive. I've had a chance to attend Expo since 2009. So uh, over the years, it's great to see how the show has expanded and highlighted different aspects of dairy. And when you're coming to Expo this year, for example, what are some of the stories that you'll be highlighting throughout the week? And what are some of the messages that you like to share with your viewers? Some of the highlights are always the people of Expo, the people and the cattle. I think a lot of people like to say, it's great to hear a family in Kansas who's dealing about the same issues we are, or a family in Iowa or Northern Minnesota. You know, they're dealing with the same issues. They're implementing the same technologies. Uh, for example, uh, the Meyer family from Kansas spoke during their virtual farm tour, and that was on Thursday. And they talked about how they have 12 robotic milkers and how it works. And they talked about the family aspects of having children work into the dairy technology, how that works in. And they were very frank and very happy to converse with people. And I think people really like that. You talked about the technology as you've made your way around the campus here at World Dairy Expo or on the fourth day. What are some of the technology, some of the themes that you're seeing in our trade show? I think five or six years ago I said robotics are here and they're here to stay maybe and they are. Wherever you go that's still I think a, a big issue. It's solving an issue of labor. It's, it's solving issues of how can we expand and be more efficient and it really is something to fit any kind of size dairy and how they can implement it to make it work and be effective. As you think of your time uh, since 2009 that you've been reporting here, do any memorable moments pop up or stories that really have stuck with you? Mine, once again, uh, I think goes back to the first year. I had a chance to bring my dad to the show and my dad has milked for over 40 years and he just never made it here, wow. so he came with he had a chance to see the cows and his jaw dropped and just wow how, how great things were and how everything was presented and uh, to see a, a, a guy who put so many years into farming and milked 36 cows for so many years to come here and still kind of be floored and uh, it took him a, a moment to digest everything but he really uh, gained even more appreciation for the industry he's been a part of. And as you've been reporting throughout the week, what are some of the, your favorite stories from this week and some topics that have really been reoccurring? And, and it's funny, those stories just happen. They just happen where you meet people and, and to see uh, a young lady from Malacca, Minnesota, it's in our area, sure. where she didn't grow up on a dairy farm. And she finished, uh, she was one of the top finishers in the youth fitting contest. And to see the glow on her face and the pride in her face where she has a direction where she's going and she really, you can tell she loves what she does. She loves cattle and she talked about how she started in horses and how it's kind of went from horses to cattle and she says, I'm here to stay. And even the people in her group were, were so proud of her and what she did and where she's come from. And as you continue to come back year after year, you know, it's easy to stay in Minnesota and maybe do some phone interviews. Why do you continue to keep coming back for the entire week and reporting on the dairy industry and hot topics? surrounding our community. It's so important to be visible. It's so important to be connected. You got to be there. You got to see it. You got to do it. You got to smell it. You got to talk to the folks. And I think that's so important in a, in a day where technology is great. It really is. But you need to stay connected. You need to see it firsthand. And I think a lot of people appreciate that, that uh, 
the promotion of this industry continues to be strong and I think you get the best feeling by actually being there. And as you report on our industry, uh, where do you see our industry headed? What's one of the biggest issues we'll face in the next five, ten years down the road? I think one of the bigger issues we see, first of all, a great thing, there's a lot of youth that want to get involved. But secondly, how do they do that? Whether it's a financial investment, is it just finding a farm, is it finding land? I think those hurdles, I think if we can somehow minimize maybe some of that huge investment, maybe make that easier, that transition, as we see farmers get older, I think uh, that's going to be something we're going to see. It's not going to go anywhere, but I think we get re-energized by seeing the youth and how passionate they are. Yeah, and we've seen record numbers throughout our youth contests already this week, so the future is certainly bright. One last question. This is going to be a tough one. How many grilled cheese sandwiches have you eaten this you week? You know, I'm only up to four, so uh, I, to uh, I have a, a little... Uh, Offside, a little wager back at home. They said, Joey, you need to bump that up a little bit. Yeah. So I'll make a stop there today. So Great. Sounds good. Well, thanks a lot, Joe, for being here and for all that you do to help share our message. Thank you. When we come back, we'll take a look at yesterday's herdsmanship winners. You're watching WXPO News. The latest innovation is the Magellan Active Alley Flooring. The Magellan Rubber Flooring is an innovative solution for drainage and removal of the liquids in the alleys. The future lies in understanding animal needs. Innovation is dedicated to solutions and to the profitability of cattle rearing. The future of dairy health is here with a new portfolio that's more comprehensive than ever. Proven products like Bovacalc, Polymast, Today, Zactran, and Epronex. Stop by Beringer Ingelheim, boost 2806 to 2809 to get your free Epronex beanie while supplies last. And don't forget to enter for your chance to win a pellet grill from Yoder Smokers. just going to get longer throughout the way so make your way over they have hot grilled cheese sandwiches throughout the day and milkshakes to support the UW-Madison clubs on campus well yesterday's daily herdsmanship award went to South Mountain Jerseys of Boonesboro Maryland the team headed up by Terry Packard and Ernie Kiefner can be found in New Holland Pavilion 2 aisle 3 South another great looking team great job everybody well, finally, we leave you with this morning's shout out, this time from JOH 04412, saying, Morning Cow Walks at Expo. Burr. Hashtag WDE, WDE 2017, World Dairy Expo, morning, cold, two more days. Certainly was a chilly one out there, but things are heating up as we gear up for day four here at World Dairy Expo. You can share your expo moments with us using the hashtag WDE2017 and you could be our next feature. Well, that's all we have this morning. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to join us again this afternoon for WXPO News at 4.30 as we share more results, stories and moments 
right here on Expo 360.